Okay, so we kind of figured out the rule was to the y equals x, and then there were certain times that we couldn't get that output of or get that input. So do you guys know what like with a function, it's not gonna the y wouldn't be an exponent, it'd be something like y equals. Um, do you know what kind of function this would be? It's on the board. Logarithmic yeah, it's going to be a logarithmic function. So 2 to the y equals x is the same as y equals 2, sorry, y equals log base 2 of x. Oh, logarithms are the best. I know this. I've been teaching this forever. I love teaching logarithms. All right, so in these logarithmic functions, the input is going to be the desired outcome. And then the output. So what were you guys finding on all those Ys? There were the raised the the raise to, the exponent or the power. Good. That says exponent. It doesn't really look like it. All right, so down here at number four, Xavier says that um, the point two, 24, 4.585 is on the graph of this function. Is he correct? So we could check it in our logarithmic function, or we could just go ahead and check it in the 2 to the y. So you would check to see if 2 to the 4.585 is equal to 24. What do you all think? Uh, it's like Pretty much. So we're going to say, yeah. We're going to say yes, because it does check out. What? 2 to the oh, yeah. y yeah. does equal that 24. If you wanted to check it in your logarithmic function, it would be log base 2 of 24. And we would just make sure that we would get that exponent. All right, so on the calculator, there is a log base. Do you guys remember how to get to it? Second. Nope, but it's okay. Close to second. Alpha. 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 Alpha log. Alpha window. Oh. oh yeah. So if you have a yellow calculator, your home screen, the screen, you can probably only see one through five. Five is log base. That's the one we're looking for. And then we would just put the two in. And we put the 24. So you're figuring out 2 to what power gives you 24. And that power is what Xavier said it was. So he was right. <laughs> Oops. Approximately. And that's a approximately 24. Okay, and then five, how are the outputs for eight and one eighth related? Well, they are opposites. And the reason why, and we kind of talked about this earlier, um, two to the negative three is the same as one over two to the positive three. So that negative exponent makes it a fraction. One of them was eight on top, and one of them was eight on the bottom. All right, and then Hannah thinks that the outputs, the output for three should be 1.5. We said it was 1.6-ish, um, but two to the 1.5 is close. Um, it's going to be 2.8. Two, eight. It's not, I mean, it's not great, but it's close. How can we figure out what it is exactly? Yeah, we're going to do log base two of what we want, which we want three. So a better answer is approximately 1.585. So whoever, I can't remember who it was, said 1.6. That was Super close. 
All right, now Grace wants to know what power she can raise 4 to to get 64. So she writes 4 to what power gives you 64. How is this similar and different from the mystery function? So how is it similar? All right, you're still finding a power or still finding an exponent. How's it different? What's the base at this time? Yeah, it's a different base. We started off with base two and this is base four. All right, so if we wanted to provide Grace with a strategy, she could do a logarithm. She could do the log base four of 64 figure it out that way, where she could still just figure out 4 to what power gets you 64. Do you guys know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll just say plug in answers. Yeah, she could plug in answers. That's the strategy. Okay, so let's look over on the back and fill in some quick notes about logarithmic functions. So we're going to talk about logarithms for a while. And you guys learned about logarithms about this time last year. I know the Algebra 2 teachers are doing log. I know they did it last week. I think some of them are still teaching it now. So this has been about a year since you thought about logarithms. But for a logarithmic function, the output of a logarithmic function tells what exponent you must raise the base to to arrive at the input. So when you're evaluating a logarithm, you're always looking for an exponent, or you're always looking for a power, or the answer to a logarithm is always a power. The one thing you did a lot in Algebra 2 that we won't do as much this year because you've already done a lot of it, is go back and forth between exponential and logarithmic form. So exponential form is what you're more comfortable with, I'm fairly confident. So exponential form... is when you have something like b raised to the y equals x. And then if I, I took that same expression and I wanted to write it in logarithmic form, you always start with the word log. All right, and then the base of exponential form is still the base of logarithmic form. And then what would I write next? Would I write the y or would I write the x? We write the x is always equal to the exponent. Now, your, some of your Algebra 2 teachers might have taught you the loop. I don't know. I know some of them do it, some of them don't. The loop is this. So you start with the base, you loop around. So whenever you are writing it, you start with the base, so log base b, and then you have you loop around to the x is equal to the y. Do y'all remember doing that? Yeah. And then you can also do the loop this way if you're going back and forth. You start with the base, raised to the y equals the x. All right, now there are two special types of logarithms. One of them is called the common log. Is that a log base 10? It is. Log base 10. And what does it look like? How is it written? Log base 10. 
just L-O-G and no base. So uh, it's written without a base most of the time. So it's just written log. And there's a log button in the calculator. It's right beside 7. So if it's log base 10, you can, don't have to do the alpha window. You can just hit that button. Do you guys know the other special logarithm? Log base yes. What's that called? It's okay. You're doing great. Natural log. Natural log is log base E. Now, E, we talked about last week. It's Euler's number. It's about 2.718. It repeat, doesn't repeat a pattern. Um, and things in nature grow exponentially with E as the base. That's how it's called natural base. Um, how is natural log written? No. It's written L-N. Why do you think it's not in L for natural log? Okay, so I think you all have taken a foreign language. How, like Spanish or French or whatever. So in Spanish, do, do you say the noun and then the adjective or the adjective and then the noun? I think you say noun. Noun, adjective. So English is adjective, noun. But I think English might be the only language that does that. So most other languages do like log, natural, or woman, beautiful. I, the noun comes first and then the adjective comes. So I'm pretty sure that's why it's L-N instead of N-L. He did not speak English, I don't think. Anyway, that's just extra information that you may or may not need. Okay, one more thing. So let's say we have the logarithmic function f of x equals log base b of x. Bless you. There are restrictions on the domain. Just like here, we had these two values where it was impossible to get those. Um, zero and negative one cannot be in your input. So the domain is going to be that x is greater than zero because you can't raise something to a power and ever make it zero or ever make it negative. However, the range has no restrictions. The range is all real numbers because anything, you can have an exponent that's any real number, fraction, decimal, zero, and positive, negative, anything. No restrictions on it. Whew. Okay, so we're going to evaluate some of these just in our head. Now, I've shown you the log base in the calculator. Obviously, you can do it in the calculator, but it's good to just use your brain sometimes, I think, anyway. So on number one, number one, uh, we want to find log base two of 32. So when you're evaluating a logarithm, you're always looking for an exponent. So you ask yourself, two to what power gives you 32? What do you answer yourself? So two to the fifth, it's five. Now, 2 to the 4, we did on the other side. 2 to the 4, did we? It was 16. Oh, we did it here, too. Well, it was done for us. So that's just going to be 5. The answer is the exponent. All right, number 2, we're going to ask ourselves 5 raised to what power gives that 5? Yes, good job. And then for three, we're going to ask ourselves 36 raised to what power gives you six? That's kind of weird. Yes, how do you remember that? It is the one half power. Do you guys know what it means? So that means square root? Oh, that's a good way to think about it. All right. But when you you raise something to the one half, so raising to the one half means taking the square root. All 
So anytime your exponent is a fraction, it's some kind of root. So one half means square root, one third means cube root, one fourth means fourth root. You learned that in algebra two. I was just surprised that anybody remembered it. You learned a lot in algebra two. So because it's the square root of 36, that means 36 to the one half. All right, so we have a couple more. So on number four, what's the base on number four? 10. If there's no base, it's base 10. So 10 to what power gives you 1 over 100? So what kind of power does it need to be to turn it into a fraction? Negative. Not negative. Yes. Because 10 squared is 100. 10 to the negative 2 is 1 over 100. All right, and then what's the base of natural log? Yeah, you do. Yes. So this is kind of a different one. E to what power gives you E to the third power? Yeah. Those powers both have to be three if the bases are both E. Nice job. Okay. Let's look at the next example with all the tables. If you'll do me a favor on the second table, the G table, let's just change this 81 to 27. because It's going to make more sense if we do it that way. Yeah. On the second table. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's just plug in these values for the exponent. So 3 to the negative 1, what do y'all think? Or, yes. So you guys do it either in your head or in your calculator. Fill in the table, please, for um, F. What number is the top one? Top one. So 3 to the 0, 3 to the 1, 3 to the 2, 3 to the 3. Right. And then either using your calculator or using your brain, uh, fill in for log base 3. Now, if you want to do it in the calculator, don't forget, it's alpha window number 5. And then you would make the base 3, and you would just put in those values. Up to you, either in your head or on the calculator. I don't care, but know how to do it one way, please. Oh, I messed up on this table. Let me fix that. If you copied my table for F, it was wrong. So what do you guys notice about the tables? They switch, right? So the X, not really opposites, but the X and Y switch. When I think of opposite, I think of opposite signs. But in this case, the X and the Y switch. What other types of functions do the X, or what types of functions do the X and Y switch? Special functions. Inverses. So because the X and Y switch, it, switch, they are inverses of each other. Which is nice whenever we're trying to figure out a problem like 3B. We know they're inverses of each other. We can. Is it not up there? Oh, sorry. Thank you. I forgot, I moved that down. All 
All right, so number three, you have a juicy secret. On the first day of school, you tell your closest friend. On the second day, you both tell another person. Every day, each person that knows the secret passes it on to one more person that hasn't heard. So A says, on what day will 64 people have heard the rumor? All right, so on day one, how many people know the rumor? Two. two. What about day two? Four. Yeah, so each one of those person people tell. Day three. Eight. So we need to keep doing this. This is we wouldn't have to do this very long. Just doubling each time. So we can see that on day six, sixty-four people know the rumor. <laughs> All right, and then for B, on what day will the whole city of Kentwood, which has a population of 51,868, have heard the rumor? Now, I don't want to keep multiplying by two until we get to that. So we can do it another way. So we can, if we want to know the power, then we can write a logarithm. What should the base of our logarithm be? Two. And then... Yes, good. All right, so somebody type that in for me. It doesn't work out exactly. I should have changed this to the population of Manchester. Uh, 15.66255712. Okay, thank you. 15 days. So I would say 16 days. Dang. Dang, you know people be gossiping, bro. People be gossiping. <laughs> Here, sure does. All right. What questions do you guys have on logarithms? Mm -hmm. 